you're still shooting in JPEG. You don't want to deal with Lightroom. You are scared of raw files. Command U. One shortcut and you fix your photos. Did you know? This video is already over. Bye. No, not at all. Today is your lucky day as I'm going to help you out. Welcome to my channel. Here we talk about photography and I make videos just like this one where I share some editing tips that anybody can follow. So if you're here for the first time and you love photography like me, it might be a good idea to subscribe. Today we will look at some of my favorite Lightroom shortcuts with two main objectives. Number one, if you are a Lightroom user, I want to help you to speed up your editing workflow. Number two, if you're not a Lightroom user, you are a JPEG user and you are missing out on the dynamic range of your landscape photography, I want to convince you to start shooting in RAW and show you that editing can be quick and can be fun. Disclosure, I talk about Lightroom because this is the software that I use to edit my photos. I'm not paid by Adobe. I pay my Lightroom subscription like anybody else. Also, right after the editing shortcuts part, we will look at uh, the best photos, the photos that I selected from the latest Lightroom challenge, the one from January. Shall we move to Lightroom? Let's do it. I'm going to share with you my five favorite shortcuts, the one I use all the time. But I will also mention a few more shortcuts that I'm sure you will find useful. Okay, we are in the library module and uh, clearly we are in Yosemite. This is my 2018 trip and I made a video about it. I'm moving my camera around a little bit because I want to make the best use possible of this branch into my composition. Have you seen that video? Usually in the library module, the first thing we need to do is to select which are the photos that we want to edit, that we want to develop. So it can happen that in a specific location, you maybe spent a little more time, you maybe took few different compositions with different lighting and now you need to do a selection. If I click on one image and uh, let's say I and I hold the shift key and then I click on this um, image so that I have uh, six images selected, I can click on N, key N to create a little survey. You will see all the images together and you can make up your mind on which one is the best composition, the best lighting whatsoever. Click on G to see all the images together. Click on D to open up the develop module. So G and D, library and develop is the first combination of shortcuts that I use all the time. G, D. In the develop module, you could just use, as I mentioned earlier, command U. This will bring up the auto settings of Lightroom and it will adjust the exposure of your photo. I never use the auto settings, so let's get rid of it. Command Z to undo auto settings. Here, the very first thing that I usually do is to decide the aspect ratio of my image. If I click on R, I will open the crop overlay panel and here, I see some guidelines, some composition guidelines. In this case, I have the classic rule of third grid, but if I click on O, I can change this grid to different composition guidelines. You will pick the one you like, but you will also encounter this view where you can see different aspect ratio potential. So you can see the four x five, the two x three, the five x seven, you will pick whatever works for you. I keep on cycling O oh, and I will go back to the rule of third guidelines, which is my favorite. 
looking at this image I believe I want to get rid of a little bit of the bottom part of the photo so I will select the 16 by 9 aspect ratio this will also suit better a YouTube video I will uh, drag the selection to the top so the lower bottom part will be cropped out Let's see a different photo to see my next favorite shortcuts. This is Italy, this is a Porto Venere and this is a very long exposure. This is a 200 seconds exposure. Unfortunately, it was not enough. In fact, as you can see from the histogram and from the photo itself, this photo is still very underexposed. So not only with this image I can show you a few more shortcuts, but I can also show you why it is worthwhile to shoot in RAW. There is a very wide dynamic range in this photo. And with the RAW file, even if the shot is underexposed, we will be able to retrieve a lot of information and bring this image back to life. But we need to fix the exposure. Let's do that. And this is my second favorite shortcut. It happens all year in the basic panel. Hold the shift key double click on exposure, double click on highlights, double click on shadows, double click on whites, double click on blacks. This is already a different image. And now, in order to see if there is any clipping in the histogram, I can click on J and I can see blue right in this area, blue right in this area, blue right in this area. It means that I am clipping in the darker part of the image. So I will need to bring up the blacks a little more and I got rid of the clipping. If I had any clipping in the highlights, let's demonstrate, it will show up in my image in red. If I want to see the before and after, I can just click on backslash, click again and you see the after. You can click on Y and see the two images side by side. With very few clicks, we already dramatically improved this image, but we can do more. Let's take care of some local adjustments now. So we can talk about my fourth favorite shortcuts, M and K. By clicking on M, we will bring up the graduated filter menu. The bottom part of this image is still too dark. So I will hold the shift key and drag from the bottom all the way to the horizon my graduated filter. And now I will open up the shadows as much as I need to and eventually I can also open up the exposure. And if I want to have this water slightly more bluish, I could add a little color. Let's pick this light blue. Maybe too much, I can 10% could be enough. With K instead, I can bring up the brush menu. Here's my brush. So what I want to do here is to bring up more details and light to this area. But if I want to see which area of the photo will be affected by my brush, I can click on O and I will see in red where I am painting my brush. I click on O again to get rid of it. And now that I created my mask, I can uh, open up the shadows. Maybe I will add a little bit of uh, texture. And for this area, I do need to open up the exposure as well. I think this is too much. I go back a little bit and this is done. Backslash to see the before. Here's the after. Again, Y to see the side by side. And you could see how very quickly with very few adjustments, we recovered an image that an untrained eye could have just rejected. But remember, this was possible because this image was taken in RAW. Are you convinced now?
there are a lot more things that can be done to a photo. And the more you practice your editing skills, the more you will find this process creative. But if you don't want to spend too much time in Lightroom, you just so that you can get very good results very, very quickly. I hope that I convinced some of you to start shooting in RAW and start editing your photos. And since we're talking about this, let's see your work. Beautiful work, thanks to everyone that decided to participate to this challenge. And there is one thing that I want to do more with this channel. It's related to your engagement, your participation to these videos. The idea with this channel, the idea with this community is to try to stimulate each other to go out more, take more photos and possibly take better photos. So at least once a month, I like to suggest to propose you a, a new photography assignment maybe a Lightroom editing assignment. And if you share your work with me, we can review it together. What do you think? Any constructive feedback, any idea is very welcome in the comments below. So for the next challenge, the next assignment, since is February, how about do some winter photography? I want to stimulate you to go out now that is cold, that is raining, that is gray, maybe snowing. Let's do it. So capture the winter, my friends. And once you do that, post your images on Instagram. Hashtag Attilio Photo Club. By the way, there are over 20,000 photos under the hashtag Attilio Photo Club. I just love it. For this particular challenge, use also the hashtag uh, Winter Photography Challenge 2021. And of course, don't forget to tag me. And this is all for today. And if you're still here, I know that you know what to do. You can like this video, you can comment on this video, you can share this video with your photographer friends, you can invite them to participate to the Winter Photography Challenge. But mainly, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.